Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. Now in this video I'm going to show you a framework or a template of a cold email copy that works every single time. I've tried this a lot of times, probably 100, 200 times, and it has worked every single time. Now, obviously, sometimes you may need to make minor adjustments and change things in the copy, but this exact framework has worked extremely well for me, and I'm going to show it to you right now. So it's fairly simple, and I'm going to give you examples of finished copies with this framework, uh, but I'm also going to explain sort of why it works and the thought process behind uh, creating this framework. So to start with, we have the pattern interrupter. That's the first sentence. Then we have a sentence describing something that your prospect already knows. And then it's a sentence describing what they want to know. And then it's a low commitment action to get what they want to know. All right. So let's start with the pattern interrupter. What is a pattern interrupter? Um, well, a pattern interrupter is essentially something that you put in your email that breaks the pattern and it requires your prospects to think. Now, business owners treat their inboxes like to-do lists, and when they scan their inboxes, they all they want to do is sort of separate order from chaos. And to do this effectively, they learn to recognize patterns and categorize their inboxes into different categories. So examples, they've learned that um, emails that start with, I came across company name, usually are sales emails. And the same way they've learned that emails that start with, here's your weekly summary, are newsletters. So if your email follows a general pattern that they categorize as spam or unwanted, you are doomed, all right? And to avoid this, it's very simple. You just must start your email in a unique way. And this is something where pattern interrupters come into place. So it's where you say something or do something or have something in your email that they can't categorize as a pattern. It's not something that they've received before. And this requires your prospects to think. You sort of break their unconscious mind. Um, so that's the goal with a, a pattern interrupter. And this can be, for example, a personalized first line, random letters just spamming your keyboard. It can be an image. It can be like anything just something unique that makes your email stand out. Then it's the what they know versus what they want to know statement or sentence. And a sentence that describes what they know describes their current situation. That's where they are right now. And a sentence that describes what they want to know describes their desired situation. And this sort of creates a gap between position A and position B. And to bridge this gap in between, so to um, sort of get from point A to point B, they must bridge the gap. And to bridge the gap, they must follow your call to action. And obviously, the sentence that describes what they want to know can't simply be something that they don't know. All right. It has to be something that they actually want to know. If not, this won't work. And then it's the call to action. And remember when I talked about bridging that gap, that's what they want to do here. But obviously, how much a person wants something will determine their level of commitment to get it. So if someone is super committed to something and is desperate for the solution, they could probably sell their wife on eBay to get it. But if someone just kind of wants something, and the required action to get there is to sell their house. They will probably not do it. And this will cause a friction point. And a friction point is basically when someone wants something, but the required action to get it is greater than their desire to get it. And this causes a friction point. Basically, the friction to enter the next step of your funnel is too high. So people don't do it. And I'm going to explain this further here with an, with an example. And this example will make a lot more sense when I um, sync it or connect it to the cold email industry. So say if someone's child is suffering from a serious illness and you tell them that you have the cure, you can cure their child. Any good parent would probably book a flight and meet you in person to learn more about it. However, if the parent then finds out that you don't have the cure to cure their child 
And they've flown all the way out to meet you in person only to find out that you can't do what you said you could do. They would probably be hesitant to meeting another doctor in person. So they get home, they receive another email from a doctor claiming the exact same thing, we can cure your child. Then they would probably be more hesitant. They wouldn't book a flight immediately and just meet you in person because they fear the same thing will happen again. So they would probably ask for more information. And after receiving, you know, over 10 plus emails from different doctors claiming the exact same thing, they will probably not even meet them in person at all because they have this belief that it will happen the same thing every single time. And the exact same thing applies to cold emails. So here's the thing, like no matter what you offer or what you do, your prospects have heard it or think that they've heard it before. So when you ask for a meeting directly, the level of commitment is likely greater than their desire to get it. So for example, a lot of you help businesses get more customers, use different ways to do it, but at the end of the day, it's still just more customers. That's what you sell. But businesses have heard this a million times before, and they're not going to book a call with you um, to find out. They want to know prior to booking the call that you are different and they want to be convinced that the same thing won't happen again. So they've been burned by agencies before. They've worked with them. How many like sales calls have you had? Like, have you worked with an agency in the past? Yeah, I have. And they said, we do it on a pay on results basis. They jumped on the call and it's a huge setup fee. And there's basically no pay on results guarantee or policy involved in the contract. They work with them. They don't get any results. Um, and then they leave them. That's basically the story of it. Um, so when you tell them that you can help them get more appointments or whatever you sell, they will approach it with a level of skepticism. And you must bypass that by providing more information up front to show them that you're different. So the reason for it here is that the reason I say a low commitment call to action is that spotting a friction point by looking at data can be extremely difficult. It's hard to see. All you will see is I'm sending this email to 100 people and no one has responded positively. Do you know why? Probably not. So then you will start tweaking your copy, tweaking your offer, tweaking your personalization. Um, but the real problem could actually just be the call to action. So you see that this is super difficult to spot by looking at data. So you need to start off with a call to action that demands the least amount of effort for your prospects. So start with that and then increase the friction as you go. But always start with the lowest um, commitment call to action. All right. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples um, with this copywriting. So I'm going to write out two uh, examples, top of my mind, um, and you can do whatever you want with them. All right. Okay, boom. So now we have the first one here. So you see it starts here. Um, it starts here with the pattern interrupter, so something personalized. And by the way, like this sentence here, you can personalize this exact sentence with clay.com. And if you want free credits, just click the link below. Um, but you can automate this process with AI. So it's just, hey, Oscar, I liked your video about mastering clay about mastering clay in 16 minutes. Keep posting content like that and you'll reach 1,000 subscribers in no time. As you know, subscribers only mean something if you want to become a famous YouTuber. What really matters is how many you can convert into paying customers. We can ATEX the number of conversions you get from YouTube in 60 days, like we did for Charlie Morgan in Gadget and Grant Cardone. Mind if I send over a two-minute video explaining how it works so you can decide if it's worth a chat. Now, please note that I haven't worked with any of these names here. Um, I'm just using them because they're pretty common names and yeah, just for the example, essentially. Uh, so that's um, one example. And now I'm going to show you um, another example of using uh, this framework.
Right. And here we have the second example. So, hey, Oscar. So, you worked with Louis Xavier at Sales Studios. Awesome testimonial. Getting clients through referrals shows you deliver great results for clients. However, scaling a business through referrals can take more time than necessary, and it's a pain in the ass because you're not in control. With the results you deliver, we can easily get you two clients in the next seven days without any referrals, as we've done for GoMatic. Can I send over a quick video so you can decide if it's worth having a chat? Now, worth noting with this copy here is that I'm just assuming that they're getting clients through referrals as their like main source of client acquisition. Um, the reason I'm assuming that is because that is the case for most marketing agencies out there. Um, so what I did here essentially is that I framed the copy instead of saying like, hey, uh, we can get you more customers on a pay on results basis like everyone does. I'm framing it differently um, and I'm creating this you know, curiosity gap and I'm explaining like what they know, what they want to know. Uh, and then a way to get it. So this is, in a nutshell, the <laughs> uh, copywriting technique that I use in many cases and this framework um, that I'm using in many cases. Um, so I hope this video was helpful. Now, we just actually launched our agency again, Gomatic. So if you want cold email consulting frameworks or help with copywriting or setups, then simply click the first link in the description um, and it will direct you to our landing page where you can book a time and learn more. Um, anyways, that's it. Thanks for me and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.